Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts. I do seem to prefer maple and also mahogany. Yeah, it's just beautiful, the, the, the wood on the back. He does manage to pick a very interesting mahogany. I don't know, he, he showed me just some planks of the curly mahogany, which is almost unknown, really. I mean, everything you see is straight grain, but he comes up with some beautiful patterns to it. He called this chocolate. He said it was very chocolate-like. Chocolate. -like. chocolate. Like, and it, and is that a color tone or a pattern? I don't know. Well, I guess it depends on the chocolate. Chocolate with nuts, without yeah. nuts. I don't know. Right. But it's just beautiful. Well, it's so unusual nice looking. Cross, oh, yeah. Cross can you? Too, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Pick it up. Can you? It's not your standard straight grain. No, mahogany. it's very unusual, but it's just so beautiful sounding. This is Julie's. I wanted to. When I knew we were doing this, I wanted to bring this guitar out. A lot of people think the ultimate is a Brazilian rosewood guitar, and it is wonderful wood. It has certain properties, certain tonality, you know, and it's just being a singer-songwriter by background, for me, rosewood competed with my voice because it was kind of right in that range, and mahogany and maple left space in the middle for me. At present, I have about 11, and Steve McCreary laughs at me because most of them in, are in the shape of an L double O. He said, "How many L double Os and C tens can you have?" You know, well, I think you can have quite a few. This would be like a double O sized. So double O, triple O, double O. Well, triple O would be the size of yours, which is actually that's long right. Scale OM. And that's this is right. smaller. And I should have called him up just to find out because I'm so bad with those Os. I mean, you have to know the rules to break the rules, you know? And we work with people, some folks kind of do a twist on the traditional, some do traditional designs, but, but you know, with their own flair, and then some folks just really go outside the box. Like Paul McGill, who, it's hard to define Paul. All of these guys, to me, are in their own way geniuses, but I mean, Paul has this ability to, I mean, he's, kind of coming up with things on his own and working out new bracing patterns and his turbo design and doing the style, you know, taking the Del Vecchio resophonic design and then making it Amagill. Here in, in America, guitar makers are becoming as common as car mechanics per capita of need, you know. And there's this initial enthusiasm. There's a buildup of interest in the craft. More and more people jump into it. And then it starts to get a little commercial, you know. And then you start to get the thing of, you know, what's the Cadillac brand? What's the Mercedes Benz brand of guitar? Um, what reputation bears the most weight? All of these factors start coming into play. 
And I think maybe some of the creativity that should be pursued is, is not. I just have this feeling that if I live long enough that I'll be able to see the stuff we're selling today for $2,500, $3,500 can be those really big number guitars. I mean, and then on top of that you have the handmade, master built, as you're saying, small shop, one man shop, luthiers. But in terms of a small bench style process guitar, you know, I just think some of those are going to really blow us away in a few years and they're great now. Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts. <laughs>